Hi everyone, it's Miss Olson, and today I'm going to show you how to um, do a color blend to create your galaxy painting. So we did review color theory a couple times already this year. Um, I will leave this PowerPoint slide up so that you can rem remember how to use primary colors to blend into secondary colors, how to use um, a primary and a secondary color to make a tertiary color, excuse me, and a um, value blend, so blending into a tint with white or blending into a shade. Um, no matter what colors you're blending, um, you need to um, remember that we are trying to paint a galaxy and we did use a plan. So you should have your planning sheet in front of you and your portrait. And these are the two things you should have out first today, your uh, planning sheet and your portrait. Now, the most important part of today is to remember that we're not painting on top of our portrait because if you paint on top of your portrait, um, you're not going to see your portrait anymore and we'll have to redo them. Um, I've already done about, let's see, almost 100 uh, portraits in fifth grade, so I really... We're done that. We want to move on. So you, this is the back of your paper. Remember, we wrote our name inside and outside. I'll show you that now in case you forgot. I should have my name inside my portrait. This is the back of our paper and the outside. You can also have your class code so no one takes your work. My name, my name. Now, on the other side, the blank, empty side is where we're painting today. So remember that we are not painting on the side where our portrait is. Now what we are painting today is the galaxy. So we are using color blending, and we are gonna use what we planned. You can devi deviate away from your plan, but we spent a whole day practicing color blends on a plan so that we would know what to do. So I circled my favorite. Mine's going from black and outer space into dark green, into light green, into yellow, into white. And a lot of galaxies do have a white center. Not all of them, but some of them. Um, so they do get really light towards the center point. And then, um, so that is where the light, the illumination is coming from. Then you'll have your color blending out and then you'll have your black. Now don't worry yet about our stars. We're gonna be doing those with our toothbrush painting next time. Um, and also remember that um, some galaxies have these kind of spiral lines coming out of them. So think of your composition. Now, this is one of my examples um, just to practice our color blending and um, practice my white to my red to my yellow to my orange to my black. Now, I did not add this, the stars on this one yet, but I have my other blend with more cool colors on this face, and I also have the other one that I did um, within this painting as well. So once you have your blend, you're going to later add your stars in there as well. So today I'm going to show you how to use your plan and your materials to paint your galaxy. Now the first thing is you want to make sure your name and class code were on the back with a pencil. And then you want to make sure that your painting is on your placemat. The reason for that is we're going to be painting all the way to the edges. And we want to make sure that it's on the placemat completely. So if your painting and your galaxy plan look like mine that's very circular, then it's up to you on whether you work side to side or up and down. If your work was more of an oblong ovular shape, um, like galaxies generally tend to look, then you might want to put your paper side to side while you work or remember up and down, but that's up to you. It will be compositionally up and down eventually when we cut our portrait. So however you want to think of your galaxy, put your paper in front of you on your placemat. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remember that when you start painting, you want to start with the lightest colors first, partially and mainly because um, we are sharing a water cup and you want to do your lightest colors, brightest colors first before your water gets stingy and your brush gets all dingy. You really want to start with those light, bright colors like your whites and your yellows. So my plan has white and yellow in the center. That is why we're starting with the center to get those light colors done. If we were to start with black like we did in our plans and work our way in, 
that black paint on the outside edge could really easily take over the inner colors and dull them down inside. So I really want to start by making sure it's my name and class code are there, my placemats on the center of my, the paper's on the center of my placemat. Now I'm going to get my white on my brush. Now, if you want, you can sketch your galaxy. Like I know mine was really circular. I'm going to place it where I want it to go. Um, you could even say, you know what? I think there's going to be a little ring coming off here. This little spiral design. Maybe you draw a whole spiral just for guidelines because we're going to paint over the whole thing. Now I'm going to get my white. Everyone should really be starting with their lightest area in the center. Even if you just have a tiny dot, start with your white. Then I'm going to move into my next color. So I'm rinsing my brush between colors, swirling and wiping. Now, if your, if your um, paints are a little dry, that's okay because we are using watered down tempera. So we're treating it like watercolor because we're going to be doing a lot of color blending. So now I'm going on the outside with some yellow. Now to blend these two together, I can use my brush and wiggle it where the lines are meeting. So now I have white fading into yellow, fading into darker yellow. So now I'm going to make sure, and I'm not going to even touch the white again because I know that the yellow can very easily overpower my white. So I'm looking at the lines on my paper and painting over them. The yellows and white are having a hard time covering them. That's okay. Um, but I'm remembering that darker colors are going to overpower lighter colors. So I'm just using a little bit of green on my brush here with a lot of water while I go near my yellow, like watercolor. So I'm overlapping my next color a little bit. I'm going to rinse my brush. Now I'm going to use my brush where the two are meeting to blend them together. Now I just did a little bit of green on my brush with water because I wanted it to look really light. And what's happening is the white of the paper is mixing with my paint. And that white paper is illuminating the light, the reflected light, from the paper back out. And it's going to look really bright. If you just use the opaque paint, like the really green, thick paint, it's not going to look as light. So you really want to water down your colors, especially those darker ones, in the center. Now, I didn't have to use those pencil lines. It's okay that they're there. But now my plan looked like this. But I did deviate a little away from the shape. Now I'm getting some inspiration Add a little bit of blue. I didn't have blue in my plan, but that's okay. I'm now going to go to my next color. Why can I move from yellow? To green to blue because I know they blend. Yellow, green, blue, all in a row. They're analogous. So you do need to understand your color theory because if you're not trying to make a brownish color right in your illuminated area, your bright color area, then you're going to be upset if you do make a murky color that you didn't want. So you need to remember we're using our analogous colors in a row or primary colors that blend. Um, if you use complementary colors like blue and orange, yellow and purple, or green and red, if you use them both in the same galaxy, then you need to make sure that there's some type of intermediate color, like red between yellow and violet, or white separating the yellow and violet, or the blue and orange. Um, you can see that happening here. There's white going to orange, and then there's uh, red and black between the blue. It doesn't go straight to blue. So you need to understand our color theory and you use your plant. So I have this illuminated area in the center. Once you switch into black, you want to keep the black away from the middle. Um, but I'm going to go out to... I had green in my plant, but I'm, cra I'm craving to use some more blue. So I'm going to use a little bit of a darker blue out here. And then I'll go to green. It's just what it my... And with your work, you can always change it as you go. It doesn't have to stick exactly at your plan. And now, now I'm using water on my brush to blend the two colors together, like we've practiced in the past with water. So I'm treating my tempera paint like watercolor. I'm getting a really watery brush, and I'm treating that brush like a watercolor painting. I'm not using a lot of paint. I'm using more water and spreading that paint. Now the other reason I have our tempera paints out 
is because we the black watercolor is going to become gray on your paper when it mixes with the white. We don't want that. So now I'm going to now switch into black, though. And when I switch first into black, use a little bit just to get that blend going. I'm blending into a darker green now. I'm just surrounding my area with some black. But where I, where I want them to blend, I'll use a little bit of water my brush. Now remember, black is a very strong color. Very strong. So just a little bit will go a long way in the beginning until you commit to fully painting the rest black. I'm just blending with a little bit of black now because if it gets all in here, it's going to really circle in. I don't want that. So I'm rinsing my brush. I want the center to be more illuminated, my blend coming out, whatever blend you chose. And then on these corner edges, that's where it's outer space. So I'm going to get a lot of black, opaque, opaque black paint. And with my opaque black, that's where we can really get the corners. That's where it's really going to make that this part look really bright, like white light. And the outsides are saying, whoa, that looks like a black hole out in outer space. But we gradually went there. You don't want it to look like something floating. You want to gradually work your way out to this really dark black. Gradually. So anywhere where I fade it out, now I can now do my opaque black paint just out on the edges. Yours might be smaller. Now, I'm seeing black and gray right next to each other right here. That's okay, but I do want more of a blend. So I'm rinsing my brush. I'm being really careful now once I've switched to black. So I don't want the black to go all over the place and dirty up or dinge up my uh, illuminated white light area. So I'm now carefully with my brush with just water going around. And you know what? This area is scaring me because I have the black coming into my color. So I really need to rinse here and I'm we're pushing outwards. If I push inwards, it's going to start to overtake this area. I'm kind of making sure that I'm pushing out and I'm not pulling the black too close to all my colors because I didn't want it to come in there. I want it to stay green there. So I'm really going to try to blend that space and then move on. Okay. So this is the start. Now what I'm seeing here is I have the illuminated area, I have the outer edges. What I could do is focus more now on the shape. So maybe this was supposed to be more like a spiral. I'm going to make more negative space. I'm taking my black and I'm cutting in wherever I really wanted um, more negative space, more of that swirled look. I'm going to carefully edit my work a little bit. And I'm just using some black, a little bit of gray black on my brush to cut a little bit more into this to make some dark uh, holes in my galaxy or some of those spiral edges. You don't have to do that, but if you wanted it to look more like it had lines like I sketched in the beginning, you can do this final. Just editing of your shape, make sure you're happy with it. And I don't want to do too much. I'm going to stop soon. Now remember, with opaque paint, if I was to make a mistake, like if I don't like this, I can paint over it with yellow. That's okay. But it's okay for now. I'm just kind of pulling it a little away. And there. All right, so I think I'm happy with it for now until I get my stars on there next time. And this is the start to my galaxy. Okay, the last thing I might do is just cut this a little bit thinner towards the edges since I want it to look more like it has like that tail. Okay, all right, well, have a great painting day. Remember, you want to work with your blends from the center being light all the way out to that dark opaque area. Um, the other thing I forgot to say because I was so busy blending is if you have a really watery area today, like let's say I start with this, towards the end or whenever you're ready, you can grab some salt, you can sprinkle it on to a really watery area. If it's not watery anymore, you can wet, wet your brush and make it watery. And you can kind of sprinkle salt and it's already going to start that starry effect. So it's a lot of multitasking today, but I know you can do it. Um, we're going to start in the center, work our way out to our black and um, see where we get to. Um, this was my plan, and this is my final um, work for now.
until I add the rest. All right. Have a wonderful painting day. Start with white. Blend your way out based on your plan according to the color wheel with your analogous colors in a row or primary colors in a row. And then um, remember you can use the salt on wet areas to uh, start that starry effect. However, and what the, what, what the salt will do is take the color away. Now, don't do the salt until you're done painting the bulk of the areas because um, you can't really paint as efficiently when the salt's there. I'll pass it off at the end. Have a great art class. Goodbye.